What if I told you that your AI can remember all your conversation, learn from your preferences and get better over time? Hey everyone, welcome to this video and today I'm going to show you how to build a knowledge graph based human like memory that can be shared across all your AI applications. And before we jump into the demo, I want to set the context as to why we are building this. Let's say that you're doing some brainstorming on cloud desktop, right? So you have some idea, you talk to your AI assistant and then you want to switch to cursor to actually execute and write the code for this idea. But as soon as you switch between these two apps, you're also switching context, right? So cursor does not exactly know like what exactly you discussed on cloud desktop with your AI assistant. And the reason being because these two applications are working in silos. There's no common layer that is connecting these two. But what if we can change that by introducing a common memory layer that all your AI applications can tap into. And this memory layer will be built using Graffiti, which is a 100% open source project by JPAI, and it uses a real time knowledge graph to store your data and to manage your memory. And uh, this is something that is completely self hosted. We'll, we'll wrap this up inside an MCP server that would be running inside a Docker container, right? So everything stays on your local machine. So now that the context is set, it's time to jump into the demo. So, first, what we're gonna do is We'll go to cloud desktop and brainstorm over an idea. So let's say I want to build a recommender system for a social media application, right? So I'll just brainstorm with my AI assistant and uh, this is my query. I'll fire it up. Right. So, I mean, it gives me sort of a comprehensive guide on to like how we can build such a recommender system and uh, what all different components would be involved, what are things that uh, one needs to take care of. So everything is there, right? So it is providing like oh, everything that uh, I need to consider to build such a system. So now that it's done, let's add this to the memory. So as we have already connected our MCP server to this, right? So it will be calling the tool and it will be adding like everything that we discussed uh, to our memory assistant or let's say the memory layer that we have created and it can be used across multiple applications. So I'll allow it and right. So it says that it has successfully added the uh, all everything that we discussed here to our memory. But I would like to show you how exactly this data is being stored and represented inside our knowledge graph. So this is where we can visualize and uh, see how this all of this data is being stored. So internally Graffiti uses Neo4j to store the knowledge graph. And uh, we have uh, this Neo4j server lo running locally on our machine and we can visualize everything here. So this is the episode that we have or the data around which uh, we are storing everything, which is a social media recommender system. So just to give you an idea of like uh, how Graffiti stores all this information. So the row data is termed as episode, right? So the entire row conversation, your text con or JSON file or document. So we call them as episodes. Now each episode is then broken down into, you know, entities and relationship, right? So this is where we uh, extract out the nodes that act as entities uh, for the knowledge graph and the relationship, which is the edge between the, uh, these different entities, right? And then we club together different entities together to form communities or cluster, right? So this is exact, exactly what we are doing here as well, right? So uh, as you can see, this is our episode, which is basically, you know, uh, we are trying to create uh, a social media recommender system and all that row conversation is stored here. Then it is uh, broken down into, you know, different uh, entities. So these are entities that are present in this episode, right? So all the major components that are involved in building such a system is here. And then you can also see like how each of these entities or all these components are related to each other, right? So we have nodes and uh, the edges that tells us relationship between these nodes, right? And as we saw in this uh, representation also, right? So similar entities are clubbed together in form of communities, right? And uh, this graph also supports real time update and also supports temporal updates. So it is very smart in handling, let's say temporal data or as soon as let's say a relationship become uh, invalid after a certain point of time, or if it needs to update some fact, it does all the heavy lifting. So basically Graffiti takes care of doing all of this for you. And uh, knowledge graphs are really great at you know providing a human like memory to your agent and they would beat vector databases or traditional semantic search any day right 
so uh, this i hope should give you an idea of like how all of this information is being represented in form of a knowledge graph now let's move to cursor and again try to tap into this uh, same memory layer or the same knowledge base that we have created and to actually you know start building the recommender system so now let's start from where we left in cloud desktop Although we have switched application, but we are not switching context because both these applications have a shared memory context or a shared memory layer. So I'll ask it to, you know, fetch the entire plan that we created earlier in a cloud desktop and uh, let's do that. Yeah, so it is uh, calling the tool to search the memory nodes, searching the memory facts, right? So as you can see, we again have the entire plan with us, right? So now cursor Cloud first stored all of this information in our knowledge graph and then cursor was able to tap into the same memory layer on the, or in the knowledge graph using this MCP server, right? Which is connected to both our application and it is able to, you know, fetch all this information. So now, I mean, I can ask it to dig deep into it and uh, maybe, you know, based on this plan, create some of the files or create a project st structure and start building on things. So I hope this gives you an idea of like what exactly we are trying and why it is so useful. So not only, you know, you can share this memory across uh, Cloud and Cursor, but for that matter, you can build any MCP host that has uh, an MCP client. You can connect it to this MCP server, right? And this server is running completely locally on your machine. So I think now it's time to understand how it's actually built. So let me show you how. So all of this can be done in just a few, I would say like three easy steps. So first, what you need to do is to, you know, uh, clone this repository, which is uh, Graffiti's official uh, GitHub repository, right? And uh, then you also need to, you know, once you do that, and uh, once you are inside this particular directory, as I'm here at the moment, right? So you also need to create uh, an environment file, right? So you just need to provide like uh, where exactly your Neo4j server would be running. So just to give you some context, so Graffiti's MCP server, when, once it is able to, you know, figure out like what all nodes, uh, how they're related to each other and everything, right? It is then using uh, Neo4j to store all of this data, right? Now both the server, like the MCP server for the Graffiti and the Neo4j server where, where it is actually storing your knowledge graph are running completely locally on our machine, right? So, and both of them would be running inside the Docker and in order to start these two, we have also provided all the instruction, right? So once you update uh, all this information in the environment. Uh, dot env file like these would be our environment variables right the next step would be to you know just run this docker compose up command right so if i show you uh, what's inside the docker compose up command right or let's say what's inside your docker compose.yml file so we are starting two container what one is for neo4j because this is a dependency wherein we are going to store uh, uh, the knowledge graph that we are going to create and then we have the graffiti mcp server right so all so you do not have to like uh, do any sort of heavy lifting all you need to do is to you know run this command right and uh, you will have uh, both these two containers up and running right and uh, once you have done that so just just let me show you like uh, you know if i go to this uh, address yeah so as you can see uh, my MCP server is running here and I have already shown you like, uh, you know, Neo 4J would start at uh, 7474. So I can access like, uh, or let's say visualize uh, this knowledge graph that is uh, being, how it's actually being stored, right? So that is there. So now that you've seen like uh, both these containers are up and running, all you need to do is to uh, go to the next step. So that's fairly easy. You, you just need to, you know, copy this configuration file, go to cursor, then you just need to go to cursor settings and inside that you would find MCP and you just need to do, uh, you know, add new global settings or let's say add the config file for this MCP server. Since our MCP server uh, for Graffiti is running on this address and we are using a server sent event as the transport mechanism for the MCP. So all of this is here and it's fairly easy to do so, right? So as soon as you do so, you would see that uh, your server or let's say the MCP server that uh, it is connected to uh, would be shown here. And uh, these are all the different tools that are available and that you can use, right? Similarly, we have uh, the configuration for Cloud Desktop as well, right? And in order to do so, all you have to do is to, you know, uh, 
in the menu you can go to developer and then click on open app config file and inside this you would find you know uh, or let's say you just have to add that uh, configuration that I just showed you. Alright, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you also found it uh, insightful and useful. If you did, then please like and uh, retweet it and share it with your network to support my work. And I'll also share uh, this GitHub repository that has all the instruction to reproduce this work at your end. So you can do the same as well. And uh, don't forget to start it. And uh, do check out uh, Graffiti's uh, open source GitHub repo. So it is pretty cool, fairly easy to use, and it already has uh, 10K plus stars. And I've been using this for a while, so I know like how it works. It is really amazing. All right, so that's all for today. I'll see you in another video. Until then, bye-bye.